So Matisse will actually do two talks today. I see her starting with GraphWiz um, and is going to present two libraries or pieces of software. Uh, one is for data visualization. I think this is um, the first one. And uh, the second one is for audio and video editing. So yeah, thank you very much again, Matisse, for um, doing something special for us and having two whole talks, right? One after another. I hope this isn't going to be too much for you. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, go ahead. I'll just leave you to it. Okay, thanks. Uh, just a quick word first. Yeah, I'm Matiz. I work at Synergize, which is a company um, dealing with remote sensing and uh, uh, geospatial technologies. <clears throat> I work for the research department and I'm a data scientist there. A bit more, uh, I have two, two, two slides about the company later in the second presentation, but here I will just start with these slides here. So uh, the talk is about GraphWiz and uh, just a fun fact, uh, this is also actually a presentation in Jupyter Notebook, so it confirms that's uh, what Andre showed, uh, that this really is everyday Jupyter. So to go on with the presentation, uh, I didn't check, I hope you see it. Um, okay, uh, so it's about GraphWiz, as I said. First of all, a disclaimer, I'm not an expert. Uh, this is huge software. It's basically its own language. Um, and uh, in addition to what I will show, so the Python bindings, this is, I mean, not in addition, at its core, uh, this is a, a dot language and there exist Python bindings, which we will utilize here. Um, okay, so focus of the talk is the quick introduction of the tool and then more or less Python focused usage. Uh, but after that, we will, the meat of the presentation will be the actual uh, examples when we will go through some demos. So about GraphVis, so it's an open source graph visualization software, basically used for showing graphs and networks or your, so to represent your processes as graphs and networks, which are kind of like intuitive ways to, uh, um, to introduce someone to what you're actually doing. So you can imagine that it's quite, widely used in various scientific and technical domains. Um, but the main point why we are using it uh, in our company is that it's automatic and also highly customizable, which allows you to actually use it in a programmatic way. Um, I'll show you later what we were dealing with before we were actually, we actually started using GraphVis. So the basic concepts, um, we have a graph, which is a collection of nodes and edges. Nodes are points on the graph and edges are connections between two nodes. So this is an example of what, uh, so what a graph looks like. The squares and circles are nodes and the arrows are the edges between them. Um, some additional nodes, so every node and edge has its own ID, so you can create it and then access it later to update it or remove it or whatever. Um, and uh, the second one is this graphs can be directional or undirectional, depending on the arrows themselves or either their arrows or lines. Um, and if you're dealing with some complex stuff in the diagram, you can use subgraphs to like uh, focus on a subset of the diagram. And you also have these clusters, which are basically the same thing as subgraphs, but enclosed in the box. So on the left, uh, the same example as before is a directed graph with arrows and on the right, an undirected graph with line edges and the squares. So these enclosing boxes are what defines a cluster. So let's look at a simple example, the key diversion. We have here uh, the Python cell importing GraphVis. And then this line here creates the object. Then we add some basic nodes called DB1, DB2, DB3 with some names and with some styling. Then we add two more nodes, B and C, and in the end, so this is just how you add the node, dot node, and then dot edge, how to create the edge between two nodes. And in this case, it's B to C. And in this case, it's just a for loop between various inputs into B. So if we run this, we then see the output. So this is what this on the left side produces here. So it's just a simple example. And uh, so dot I mentioned is its own language. 
so we can view the source. And this is what it actually looks like. And this is uh, reproducible. I can now copy this, go to graphviz.online, uh, graphviz online. Uh, just to confirm, do you see this when I switched? Okay, thank you. So you can just uh, copy paste it to, uh, no, this is not the right thing. Copy paste this inside and bam, you get it. You get the same thing based on just this source code here. Uh, and a simple uh, bonus content, you can add it, add it to sketchviz.com just to get this uh, cartoon-like uh, example of the same diagram. Okay, well, this was quite simple. Let's look at a proper one. Um, and it has to do quite a lot with what we're actually de dealing with in our uh, company. So we're working with one project called, called Area Monitoring, where we are using satellite information to monitor the parcels, the agricult agricultural parcels on the ground to see if everything is as it's supposed to be. So for example, that uh, farmers aren't cheating or perhaps they're, um, they have mistakes in their declarations and so on. So we have signals. Signals are the time series information like the RGB information from the satellite. And we have uh, this time series records for each agricultural parcel, for example, for the whole year, throughout the year, so like a uh, amount of vegetation on the parcel. And then we have markers. And these markers are derivatives of, symbol, uh, of signals, for example, like a mowing detector, which detects how many times mowing has occurred or uh, has been, um, a, a, a meadow has been mowed throughout a particular year and so on. And then lastly, we have the traffic light system, which uh, connects the whole, all the things. And then for each particular parcel, parcel returns a red, yellow, or a green. That's why it's called the traffic light system. And if it's red, something has gone wrong. If it's green, it's okay. So we want as much greens as possible. So all of these connect into uh, a complex ecosystem of uh, processes. And we would like to show this in a form of a diagram. And let's do this now. So first, again, we create the dot, uh, which is the graphics diagram uh, object in this first cell. And then we just define some different styles so we don't get mad uh, because of uh, the sheer amount of things that we're going to put in. And then after that, we put the signals, and which is the input data. And let's just define uh, for, this, uh, for these nodes with this particular styling. And these are all the inputs that we're going to put in into our process. Going on, we are adding some markers. So now we are already uh, left with a lot of these things, which are just a bunch of notes that no one is interested in. Um, but for example, you can see here, you have mowing, and then here it's something also mowing related. So perhaps these two could be clustered together into a single, uh, single uh, subgraph. And we can do this using this uh, cluster keyword. Uh, so subgraph with a cluster is a cluster. And you just add the edges inside and do this for all the things that are connected. So just a disclaimer here, it's not actually important that you completely understand what is going on, just so that you see how, uh, how it's possible to represent a complex process as a diagram. So now we have the same thing as before, but just the related things are grouped together as you can see here. So this is already starting to look a bit more interesting. Moving on, now we are doing some connections. So we mentioned that these markers are dependent or they're the derivatives of the signals. So here we can show that. So we in a for loop collect signals to each of these markers defined in this array here. And we get this. So we connected signals to all of these things that are actually dependent on the signals. Moving on. Now we are also adding some connections between markers. So just additional layers of connections between them. Okay, so it's starting to look a bit more interesting. And the only thing left is now this traffic light system. So as I mentioned, the input of everything and then which puts out the red, red uh, um, green, and yellow outputs for each particular parcel. So these are the traffic light system connections. 
Okay, so maybe perhaps people would already stop here, but my OCD prevents me to do that because I would like to have these inputs ranked together on the same level at the top. And perhaps these traffic light inputs, everything that this traffic light accepts, I want it to, have, to be on, also on the same level. And this is possible to do using rank. So we again create the subgraph. We define all the nodes which we want to be on the same level or the same rank. And then we just say, this subgraph has the same rank. And after doing that, bada beam, bada boom, we get the final output. So this is then the final diagram of the whole process that we just presented. Um, so you can see it's complex and uh, it's relative, so a relatively complex process uh, can be represented with a nice diagram in a relatively simple way. It was just a basic Python code. You just need to know what is what and how it's connected behind in, in, uh, in your project. Okay, so what does this look like? It's similar to before. It's just a bit more content inside and a bit more styles. But just so you believe me, again, I can just select here everything, copy, and just a replace text here. And it's basically getting the same thing as I did before. And yeah, um, so let's just now uh, not not in the same detail, but to really show the power of the, of uh, GraphVis, show what we can do. So let's look at the hardcore example. So as I mentioned, we have these uh, agricultural parcels, and what this what this uh, process does, uh, it takes each parcel, and for each parcel, it uh, answers some questions. For example, has mowing been detected on this? Is there something growing? on this parcel or not? Uh, is this parcel homogeneous or is there uh, multiple crops growing on it? And so on and so on and so on. There are a lot of questions that, uh, uh, we, they, we, that the process needs to answer for each of the parcel in order to decide in the end if this is a green or a yellow or a red scenario. And my question is, can we draw this? Uh, so, sorry. So as you can see, we, this basically, each parcel goes through some sort of a decision tree. And my question is, can we draw this decision tree using all the paths of these uh, separate, each and every agricultural parcel that goes through the scenario? And the answer is, of course, yes. Let's look how we would do this. So first of all, you need to save the path of each agricultural parcel that goes through this process. And this is done here under path. So this is the path of each agricultural parcel. Each of these codes is a node and each of these dot n or dot y is a yes or no edge. And the only thing that you need to do is extract the nodes, link them to some labels, construct the edges, add these to the graphs, add the labels. Perhaps you can even do counts of, uh, counts of these edges and what you get in the end is something like this. So this is then the final diagram or the decision tree process of all the input parcels that go through the system. And this is, for example, something that the clients are very interested in. And it's all been done in a very programmatic way, an automatic way, and it's very simple to deal with. And not only that, it's also very simple to uh, edit this because this is a much more, um, I mean, you may, you think this is ugly, but it's actually quite, uh, it actually looks quite nice, especially when compared to what we did in the path, which was having SVG plots and editing them. And this was crazy hard and not at all scalable. So that's it for the graphics part. It's a bit of a shorter presentation. Um, I guess we can split it here and uh, I can take qu questions and provide some answers before we move on. Thank you very much, Matisse. That was a great presentation. Um, do we have any questions? I see that there was some. Yeah, I have. I see that there was some confusion on the word parcel. If you look at the chat. Uh -huh. Just let me open it. Okay. Let's see how far up I have to go. 
I don't think there are questions. Uh -huh. Okay, so I apart. Think Andrei has one. I, I uh -huh. have I have a question, uh, Matiz. Uh, yes. And also, the, the major pain for me working with uh, Graph V uh, was always installing it. Right? Do you have any shortcuts? You know, how do you install it? Because every time I I start using it, you know, and I need it for some small thing, you know, like to display, you know, decision tree, something like this. Mm -hmm. And I struggle to install it, right? So and on a different operating system, there is a different challenge, right? So on, the, on Unix, there is one. Uh, how do you do that? You know, it, is there like any shortcut to avoid this pain? Or... So I guess this is actually the case where uh, the different uh, operating systems uh, mm -hmm. make the difference because I don't remember having any issues at all. I just mm -hmm. pip install graphics and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Lucky for me. So this is uh, this was uh, as well as uh, so this was Unix. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, Roman, you had a question as well. Yeah, there's one in the chat, but maybe I can ask one first. Um, okay. Is there a way to construct this dependency model of of a model you're you're constructing in, say, Keras or PyTorch or something like that? Is there a way to to make the graph automatic from from the model? So I don't think that you would need to do this uh, by yourself using the GraphVis. But since GraphVis in the background uses this dot language, I would imagine that all of these uh, widely known uh, tools use the dot language in the background on their own. So basically, they have to support it. Uh, if they don't. Um, then you have to do it manually and get your hands dirty from scratch, basically by defining each step in your model uh, as a node and then defining edges and so on. So, yeah, that's that's not really a problem. The problem is when you change the model, mm -hmm. <laughs> then you have to track your changes into the uh, graph as well. You forget. Yeah, that's where things hit the fan. So, for example, in this case, as I mentioned, uh, in order to get this path, you, we actually had to do this, uh, this exact thing. For each step in the question decision tree, we had to add our own, uh, we had to add the node and then connect them. Okay, there's one question in the comments. Um... Uh, Gregor is asking, is the position of markers made automatically? Uh, yes. So the graph is somewhat optimizes the position based on the constraints that you give it. So an example in this case, uh, you just say left to right, or you can say top to bottom. And uh, if you just put in the nodes, it will just uh, do it as simply as possible. But in this case, um, when you add some constraints, it takes those constraints into account and then optimizes the rest of the floating figures. Uh, so I guess I imagine in a way that there is as uh, little overlap as possible and the, the space is as confined as possible. This is what I would assume, but I don't know for 100%. Okay. 